Hey, thank you for watching this sit with me video. I'm Ryan Freeman, filmmaker and music producer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made a trailer for one of our new short documentaries called Two Heavens as One. Check it out. Pretty sweet, right? So for this video, I'm going to show you, you know, starting from the very beginning, how I kind of pieced that whole trailer together from creating the, the music and to um, putting it together in the edit. It's going to be mostly unscripted. I have a rough idea of kind of like the direction that I want to go in for this trailer. So I want my channel to be a conversation uh, between me and you. Um, so if you if you guys have any questions or you're wondering like what plugin I'm using or instrument um, or kind of like what I'm doing in the edit, uh, just just let me know in the comments. Just leave the timestamp and I'll, I'll try my best to get back to you. I'll try to get back to everyone. All right. So let's just dive in. OK, so what I normally do for the trailer is I actually pull instrumentation and melodies um, from the full film score that I've already made. So this is it. This is for, I think, the second half of the film or like the third act, something like that. Um, so I'm just going to play you this bit here. And what I've done is I've actually found this amazing sample, sample library. And what they've done is they've recorded multiple Tycho drums. Um, and as you can see... And what they have is they have like rim shots. They have, um, you know, the performers playing, uh, like hitting the skin with their hand, hitting it with like a stick. I mean, they've done a phenomenal job on this. So the idea with film scores, and especially if you're using a lot of samples and not, you don't really have the luxury of recording a live orchestra or working with real performers, um, what you want to do is you want your final score to sound as realistic as possible. And, and I find a good way to do that is actually um, putting the same reverb on all of the instruments. That way you're kind of creating this space, right? You're creating um, this kind of soundscape as if you are sitting there in a theater and you're listening to a live orchestra or a taiko ensemble or something like that. So all of the instruments are, are playing together and they all have the same reverb and it really creates this awesome kind of ambience and, and really brings life into the performance, I find, even though it's all in the box, all in my computer. There it is, two heavens as one. And you can watch the full film um, it's a short documentary. You can watch it on our other channel called Lossless TV. And that's a short documentary channel that, uh, that we produce here at Lossless Creative in Toronto. And we'll be uploading uh, new short films every month. So I'll just show you what I mean about this reverb and creating a space, like, creating the, like capturing kind of like a live performance. So look, so a, and I know a lot of sample libraries actually have this. They record it close, they record it far. I'm just muting them here. So what you can do is really fine tune the distance that you would like it to sound. So check this out. So you just, you just get the right balance. Pretty cool. Okay, so for the trailer score, what I'm gonna do is pull out sections of the original film score that I think will work for the trailer. Um, because what you wanna do in a trailer, it's gonna be between 20 and 30 seconds and, it's, and our trailers live on Instagram and Facebook. And really the whole idea is to really capture the audience's attention and to direct them to the full film, right? So at least within the first five seconds, it has to be like 
really attention grabbing. Um, either a beautiful shot or kind of like, it has to just start with a bang because you, you, you can't have like a, a brief moment in time to really hook someone in there. Um, so that, that's kind of how I approach it. The first five seconds are pivotal and it has to really hit. And then obviously it'll hook them in. Then they'll watch the full trailer and be like, wow, this film looks amazing. And I want to go watch the full thing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to clean up this project. So I'm going to save it as a new file. And what I'm doing is I'm just finding different parts of the score that I want to use within the trailer because you do want it to have similar sounds and kind of like a similar tone so people know um, what to expect when they go into watching your film. So I already know I, I really like this part and I want to use it. It's, it's part of the fight scene. So I love the tension that this part has, and it just has a really nice uh, kind of build to it. Um, I love this little break here. It's like, and then all the drums come in and they start fighting. So I definitely want to use that in the trailer. It's one of my favorite parts in the score. So what I'll do is I'll just delete. I'll just delete everything that I don't want to use. Uh, we're going to remove the movie. Yep, don't need this, don't need that, don't need that. Get rid of that. Um, base, we'll keep that. Right now I'm just kind of cleaning up the project file. So I'm going to use these parts. And then this little drum bit here. I really like that. Let me just show you what I did here. So I just created this pattern. And what you want to do is you want to create a rainbow with the velocity. So you want it to, once again, the whole idea is you're trying to create a performance. So it sounds as real as possible when you're working with sample instruments. So here, if it was a real drummer, they'd start very softly and kind of crescendo to the end. So that's exactly what I did here. And it sounds pretty real to me. So I love that. And like what I was saying, you want the beginning of the trailer the, within the first five seconds to really capture the audience attention. So I'm going to use this. And once again, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And I'll do my best to, to respond. This is what I'm thinking. So for me, this feels right, right about here, maybe a little earlier. Um, this is where I want it to crescendo, to go into this drum bit. And in the trailer, you know, I'll start it. This is kind of what I'm thinking. I'll start it off with a bang. This to really get you in hooked in. Um, and I also don't like to start trailers um, like too loudly for like the first bar. Um, I, I like it to kind of ease in. So you don't like scare your viewer because if you're scrolling on Instagram, it's like, you know, that's kind of, going to freak you out and kind of turn people off. It's not that appealing to me at least. So what I'm going to do is kind of bring everything in here. Move this guy back. Bring this in here. I can take these. Bring them in there.
Let me just show you this drum because this is another little trick that I tend to do. So a lot of the drums, they're, you know, they're timed, they're, they're quantized and they're, they're on the grid more or less. But I like to throw in I like to throw in these uh, kind of like spontaneous um, little drum rhythms or sounds, or it could be like any instrument really. Um, but it's not quantized. It's not on the grid at all. So it really gives like an organic kind of feel and performance to the piece. So let me just play it for you. So it's just kind of create this kind of distant, spooky kind of feel like something's about to happen, but you don't really know what. So it's very, very subtle. And upon the first listen, you might not actually catch it or realize that it's there, but it's there. So this is looking really good. I'll show you guys. So I have a bass. So this is from the fine folks at Output. They make amazing stuff. This is Signal. And obviously I do my own processing. What I like to do is actually put this um, sub enhancer. It's like a sub bass. And you can really fine tune, really fine tune like um, kind of like a, a, a lower, almost like distant grumbly kind of feeling. So I do that with like a, a few subs, especially in my more like cinematic score stuff. I believe this might be a vocal. Oh, no. I believe that's a viola. Oh, that's a celli. Hello. Cello. School of Rock reference. Classic. So I got two cellos going. I do believe they are playing an octave. Very cool. Then I have these really, really sweet um, vocal, these really cool vocals that I use throughout the film. So this is called Vocalize 2. Um, it's part of this gravity pack by Heaviosity. And it really, like these guys are doing amazing work. Uh, it's probably, they are probably my favorite um, like sample company at the moment. They just make amazing instruments and their samples and libraries are just top notch. So like you can actually see, see the sample. You can tune it. So what I did is I just put, you know, their, their reverbs on a little delay. And the cool thing is you can actually start, start the, uh, I guess the, the trigger in their, in the sample at different parts of the sample you can choose. So if you want start playing there, just like it from the beginning, like I said, they do amazing work. So this is looking pretty good to me. Um, sometimes less is more. I, I, I definitely find that um, in trailers and it, maybe it's like a little trendy right now. You might hear just like a little piano ding, 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 or something like that with like a grumbly bass or some kind of thing in like a lot of trailers these days. Kind of going for like a, a minimal feel is pretty cool. So I, I might take out some of this. Let's just try muting. I think it might be missing. I definitely missed those vocals. Let's see.
Definitely liking the way this is sounding. It's pretty cool. And then what I have in here is, uh, they're actually just rim shots. But it kind of sounds like a, a ticking clock or something like that. Very Hans Zimmer-esque. <laughs> So I think that's pretty cool. And yeah, so I'm going to keep that there. And then what I want to do here, this is good. And another th um, thing that I like to do with our trailers is at the end, you kind of want it to land with like a hit or a boom or something like that um, because we'll throw our logo in there and then we'll have a title to direct people um, to our website or to YouTube to watch the full film. So usually I, I like to end it with some kind of hit. Um, and that's where the title will appear, which I'll, I'll show you later on in this video. But I think what's missing is this, uh, this Tyco rim shot. Kind of missing that at the end. Okay. So just kind of line this up here. Is that... Oops. I think I want these to really hit. This one, not as hard. So like I said, I'm just trying to create like a performance, right? You want there to be expression and emotion in, you know, even something as simple as a drum hit. Kind of got lost there. Let's turn up a bit. Sounds pretty cool to me. And then what I'd like to do, just kind of emphasize this, kind of swoosh out, whoosh. Some, you know, something like that. That's kind of what I'm hearing here. Just kind of work, work on that a bit. So what I do is I keep all my samples on a separate hard drive. Really, I, I have like a music hard drive that has, you know, all my samples, has all my instruments on it. Um, and I have kind of like some random, random things, personal projects, different things like that on there. Um, then I have... Uh, you know, separate hard drives to kind of house the projects and all of our footage. As you can see, we got exports, footage, grade, all these different things. The footage, audio. This was shot on the Red Scarlet W in 5K, and then the slow motion is in 4K. The final film is available to watch in 4K. Actually, kind of like that one. Maybe a little too intense. All right, let's go with the first one. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's just fine tune the. Uh, the volume, put a little low cut on these. So they're kind of noisy and just kind of cluttery. As you can see, check it. So, so what you want to do is you don't need all this noise really. Your, your main uh, sound that you want to hear is kind of in this frequency band. So let's just chop up that won't make a difference. Let's save that. So I'm definitely liking the way this is sounding. And as you've probably noticed, I'm working with uh, this master that I've already placed on, just unlike these, placed on the film score. So always just do a fairly light master for um, more of this 
uh, like for, for my scores really. So I put a compressor, I do an EQ and then a light limiter, Not, nothing too crazy. If you guys have any suggestions for tutorials or videos that you'd like to see, you know, just leave a comment and I'll go through it and see, um, see kind of like the most popular uh, ask, I guess. And, and then I'll, I'll kind of dive into one of those um, suggestions a, bit, a little more deeper. Because to be honest, like I could spend 30 minutes just talking about taiko drums and going through this, you know, reverbs and stuff like that. But obviously don't want to bore anyone and we got to get to the trailer. Okay, so I am... Fairly happy. Let's just have one final listen, see if we need to adjust anything in the mix. But I think it's definitely shaped up pretty nicely. Okay, so I heard a few things. Let's go back to the beginning here. This didn't hit hard enough for me, so let's try something like this. And all that this is, it's just a, it's just a hit. Yep, that sounds really good. And then remember this kind of distant offbeat drum. Actually, maybe like that a little louder and then maybe just a little more distant. Okay. All right, so that sounds good. Now let's export. So what you want to do, you just want to listen to the very end of your song. And since we have reverbs and some delays going, you know, maybe like little effects like that, um, you just want to see where it kind of fades out. So there. All right, so we can bring it right to 18. All right. So these are my export settings. I do PCM and I do a WAV file, 16-bit, 4041. This is the trick for me. Never, ever normalize because I do my own master. Um, I would just not recommend people normalizing if you are you know, a professional, um, making music at a professional level. I would not normalize. Um, Always do it in real time because I think there are little nuances that um, it does export. I'm not, you know, don't quote me on that, but that's just kind of what I think. Let's do. Let's see. I'll replace that. That was something else I made. There you go. And that's it. The music is done. We'll save that and quit that. Now we're going to go into Premiere and uh, we'll place the music in and then start pulling our footage from the film and create this trailer. Okay, so this is a 4K um, sequence, but the final trailer, uh, just for the purpose that it serves, it will be in 1080. Um, I also might uh, kind of crop it into a square depending on uh, 
yeah, it just depends. Not sure, but probably something like that for Instagram and then just keep it in um, its, its standard ratio for, for Facebook. But all the footage is in 4K right now, 5K and 4K. So we'll just keep it like this. Okay, so right now it goes in it goes into this final um, kind of drum breakdown, which was from the final fight scene in the film. So first thing I'm going to do, since that was scored to the film, I'm going to pull that pull that footage. This is the graded, and I have these sound effects. Fun fact about these sound effects was our uh, our microphone or our uh, external recorder wasn't working when we're out in the forest. Um, so I had to record this on my iPhone and then just process it later, but it works. Hey! Pretty cool. I'm going to do is pull this. Drum set here. And pull all of that. Simply copy, paste it in. So what I'm going to do for the trailer is kind of move some of this footage around so it fits what I'm going for. And like I said, this is the final hit will be where our lossless TV logo appears and, and then, uh, you know, to direct people to watch it on YouTube or lossless So I don't need that sword hit there. Don't need this one there. That's looking pretty good. And obviously, this bit is uh, shorter than the original score, so I'm just going to kind of condense this here. Start here. Okay, I'll show Jason. And just a little side note, these guys are absolute troopers. Look at this. That is blood on his sword. They were going hard for the film. And, uh, you know, they're not holding anything back. So they're actually striking very, very hard, very true, as they would say. And, uh, you know, some, some of their hits missed the sword and happened to hit Jason's knuckles, but he kind of hung in there and yeah, just an interesting little detail there. Let's see this. So that looked really nice to me. So now we are going to find, uh, kind of just go through our film and find footage for the beginning of this trailer. So let's go here to the graded sequence. Okay. So 
So I love this. Love this as he's like raising his hand. So what I'll do is I'll actually just cut it. Then I'll copy it. And then I'll undo the cut. I'll bring it back in here. I think that will be our intro. Something like that. And then let's see what else. Love this whole sequence. So what I'll do is I'll go through um, the final version of the film and then I'll just pull like my favorite clips from it. Um, and then try to tell like a mini story in the trailer from those clips. But sometimes it just ends up being like a bit of a montage. So you, you give the, the viewer kind of like a, an overall feel for what the film's going to be vi visually and musically. That just looks beautiful. It's one of my favorite shots. So I love this whole sequence here. It could be cool if we went something like this. Have him just like pulling it out. Something like that. Maybe a little bit more. A bit more of that action going. Okay. I mean, these shots are just crazy cool. So we'll drop these in here. So I'm just matching up as his foot hits the ground. Maybe a little late. Something like that. It's kind of cool. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I don't think I'll use those. Let's try this. Okay, let's see what else we got here. That's pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'll just select the clip, copy it, just start accumulating kind of like footage to work with. Shot's pretty cool. I like this this little sequence, but if you remember in our trailer, um, maybe I want to wait for the sword fighting to kind of happen for that sequence. So maybe I don't want to give it away till the very end here. So I'll just keep skipping that. Hmm. Forgot about these. Oh yeah, this is really cool. Once again, maybe less is more. Let's just try this. Bring this in here. Hmm. Okay, I have an idea. Try this. Sometimes you have to be okay with just <laughs> scrapping things and starting over. I can use that. I think open with this shot. 
move these guys here. Let's try that. Something like this. And then we'll pull just to kind of establish this forest because it kind of jumps from the beach to the forest scene and it doesn't really make sense. So maybe like pull these two clips. Let's see what, what this looks like. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's just pull the lossless TV logo. Okay, so I've just put in the lossless TV logo. Let's see here. Something like that. Then what I like to do is just like a little scale. So let's just extend this a bit. I now have the lossless TV logo in. And what I've done is I've just created a little fade dip to black. That, I'm gonna set this to 50. Very end. I'll go right to black for the very end. Which is a smoother fade if it's set to 50. Okay. Let's check this out. Pretty sweet. Really like that. Maybe this, the trees are maybe a little too slanted for the beginning. Great. So once we're happy with our final trailer, uh, what we want to do is actually go into audio. And what I, I don't see a lot of people doing is kind of working on the, uh, the master track for their video, master audio track that is. So what I do is I'll add something very simple, but I add a hard limiter. Don't let the name fool you. It's not limiting it too hard. I just I actually just leave it um, on the default setting because this is what I would set it to as well. This is just making sure that your track is not distorting in the final export. Um, and as you can see, you know, especially if you have the music going full blast and you have these sound effects coming in, I'll show you. See how it's not clipping now? Since I've turned it off, you can see now it's starting to distort. So I'll just leave it on. And what I'll do is I find for Instagram, actually, um, my audio usually distorts on Instagram. Maybe that's because of their compression um, algorithms or something like that. Um, so what I tend to do is bring the final master down about 3 dB for my, in for my Instagram exports. Uh, that way I find it actually does not distort um, on the phone. And it's also, it's, for whatever reason, it still sounds very loud. Um, for however Instagram compresses your video. So yeah, 
once I get that, I'll just leave it back to that for, uh, for our Facebook export. And that's that. All right, so that's it. Thank you for watching this sit with me video. If you have any uh, questions about anything that I did, any workflow um, suggestions as well, just you know, write down in the comments and I'll, I'll be sure to respond. If you could like this video, it'd help me out a lot and also share it with a friend if you think that they would like this. You can also watch the full version of the film at our Lossless TV channel. I wish you guys a great day and thanks for watching. I upload at least once a week, so subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss the next video. Also check out Lossless TV. It's our cinematic short documentary channel. This is where I upload my films, which features all original music. I really love connecting with people on Instagram and seeing their work. So be sure to follow me at It's Ryan Freeman. Thanks again for watching.